What's up everyone, welcome back to Saint Say Awakening. We're back with the character reviews and this time we're gonna talk about the new banner that we got this week. Orphe, Lyra, Lyra, Orphe, Orpheus, I'm not even sure how to pronounce his name, but he's really cool. Quick reminder that this is also a giveaway video, so make sure to leave a comment below. We'll have some more uh, detailed rules at the end of the video. We're gonna switch over to Omri's account who already pulled him, already leveled him up, already skilled him up so that we can look at all of his skills, all the usual stuff and do a really nice demonstration. <laughs> Alright, here we go then. So, Orphe is a unit that can fulfill two roles in a team. He can contribute with damage, but he's also one of the strongest anti-healing and anti-lifesteal units. Let's take a look at his skills, starting with the first one, but always keeping in mind that a lot of these skills interact with the fourth one, which is a passive. So we'll look at that one last to understand how. His first skill, called Stringer Sonata, is an individual attack of the cosmic type. He is a Cosmo attacker, but besides the small damage, it also does a couple of other things. First, it has a chance to apply a Seal of Lyra. We're just gonna call them Seals going forward. These Seals can stack on enemy units, but they can also be pure. Besides that, it also has the chance to activate the no healing passive, which is his fourth skill. So, a lot of things in one skill, and this is one of the few saints in the game where it's actually advisable to skill up this first ability. With skill ups, we can increase the damage that it does, which is not very significant, but we can increase the chances of applying the seals from just 50% to 100% guaranteed only on skill level 3. We can also guarantee the activation of the passive if we take this to level 5, then it goes to 100%. Another thing that increases is the number of seals that we can stack per unit. It starts at only one seal per enemy, goes to two, then to three, then to five, and then a total of 10. So with 10 seals on each enemy, that's a total of 60 potential seals that we can have on the enemy team. The second skill, the Death Trip Serenade, is one of the ways that Orphe does damage, but it's not a direct attack. What it does when you use it is that Lyra will play his Death Trip Serenade and he will give himself a buff. This shows up on the form of an icon of a musical note atop his head. He also gets an aura around him. While this state is active on Orphe, all of the enemy units have a chance to get a Lyra seal on top of him after every move and they will also receive damage. That chance to get a seal starts at only 50%, but on level to it's already 100. The amount of damage they receive after every movement also goes up from 100 to 180. Let me see if you can see it. 180% on max skill and the effect of the serenade or the buff that Orphe gives himself goes from lasting from only one round to three rounds and this thing can stack. That means that if we power up the skill we can give Orphe that buff several times a maximum of three and the enemies will be hit three times after every movement. That is actually crazy. It doesn't sound like much because the multiplier is kind of low but when you have this thing stacked up and dealing damage after every enemy movement Movement, the enemy team is going to start losing HP really, really quickly. We tested it today with Omri with his skill level ups, and it's insane. After only two rounds, if you don't bring a healer, you're dead. One thing to note about the skill that we also found out testing with Omri is that control does affect it. It's not like Raimi's worm that will keep dealing damage and stealing HP if he's controlled. If Lyra can't move, he cannot deal damage. The damage happens automatically, but it's still Lyra doing it. So if he's frozen, stunned, or if he's chained up by Shun, the damage will not take place. Up next, we have the Stringer Fine, his third ability and one that allows him to deal a really big chunk of damage. And it's because of this skill that he's compared a little bit with Nebular Shunt. Now, like we saw before, the first and the second skill allow us to accumulate those seals of Lyra. When we use this thing, Lyra will detonate all of the seals that are on the battlefield and apply that damage to one single enemy. Very important, this is not AoE, this is a single target attack and all of the seals on the battlefield will be consumed. So, it takes a while to build up. Now, the enemies will be getting those seals automatically after the moves if we use the second skill, but it still takes time to build up and when you do finally use it it's a big chunk of damage but from the testing we've done so far it's not like super super mega overwhelming if you have a good buildup it should still be able to kill almost anything out there in one shot if they're not protected by Junit. the last effect of the skill is that it will also apply the passive 100 guaranteed it will apply the no healing passive to the unit that you attacked so even though you're blowing up all of the seals the passive only gets applied to the unit that you attacked individually and that brings us to his passive the string of nocturne which is the one that allows him to counter healing and lifesteal teams it works in a pretty straightforward fashion. If you manage to apply this passive, you will see that there will be musical notes and flowers going around the unit that has it applied. That means that unit cannot heal and cannot lifesteal until the healing and the lifesteal exceed a certain amount of Orphe's Cosmo attack. So if he has, I don't know, 10,000 Cosmo attack on skill level one, it has to exceed 200% of that. So that unit will have to try to heal for a total of 20,000. And if it does exceed that 20,000 lifesteal or heal, then it'll be able to heal again. In the meantime, it'll be zero. The number will Will display in green just like a regular heal but it'll be a zero. This passive also interacts with two other states or two other types of control in the game and one of them isn't even available yet. The first one is sleep which I think Sorrento is the only unit in the game that can sleep. If a unit already has the stringer nocturne passive active and then that unit falls asleep then the unit will receive damage but it will not wake up. The same thing will happen when nightmare is finally available and that's hypnos. Hypnos the god double s unit he's the only one that can apply nightmare and the same mechanic will apply to that. And now the really complicated part how the hell do you skill this 
guy up and why do we say that he's so costly? For a very basic Orphe that can kind of start working but is not really gonna get you very far, I would recommend skill 1 on level 3. That's to have a 100% chance to apply seals though we only have a 60% chance to apply the passive. Skill 2 would be on level 2 because we need 2 skills upgraded for the 8 cents anyway. So this is the second one that I would skill up. Only to level 2 for a basic Orphe but again guys it's not going to be very good. Skill 3 will be on level 1 because it's gonna be very hard to accumulate seals anyway and so would the 4th one because the only thing that increases here is the amount of Cosmo attack that the enemy has to cover before it can heal. So that's a basic Orphe. Only 4 tomes but not gonna win you any battles. If you want to have a super Orphe then skill 1 is recommended at level 5 because here we not only increase the damage which is not really very important but all of our probabilities go to 100%. That means guaranteed seals, guaranteed passive if you hit anybody with this one. And we can also stack up to 10 seals on every enemy unit. Skill 2 would be on level 5 as well just like Omri has it here because this is really what deals the most damage. It's this accumulative damage that's going to happen automatically after the units move. On skill level 5 this goes to 180% Cosmo damage per hit and there's also 100% chance to get heals. It lasts for 3 rounds so you can stack the crap out of it. Level 5 for skill 2. On skill 3 I think level 3 is okay. You can take it further if you have the tomes. If you're going to make Orphe one of your primary units in your team you'll deal a little bit more damage per seal but you'll also be able to blow up 20 instead of 15. Now if you take it to 5 that's a total of 30 seals that you can blow up but it takes a long time to accumulate it. You would only be able to use the skill once every like three or four turns. The last skill, the passive, is completely optional. I've talked to people that have already used them in other versions of the game and he is used primarily as a damage dealer. This thing about the no healing is kind of like a bonus. If it happens, it's great. If it doesn't happen, then it's not a huge deal. So whether you want to throw tomes in here or not is totally up to you. If you want to take it to skill level three, it's only three tomes, so it's not a huge investment. But if I were to get him and I were to build him, I'd probably leave it at one. So a super Orphe would be five, five, three, one. Total of 23 tomes. Under 8 cents, he's one of those units that's used primarily in PvP, so any PvP monster should be leveled up all the way. Alpha gives us Cosmo Attack and also Cosmo Defense Pierce. Beta gives us HP and status resistance, like we saw, resistance is important because control does affect them greatly. Gamma gives us Cosmo Attack and Cosmo Damage, while Delta, as usual, gives us HP and resistance to damage over to his Cosmo and this is actually really straight up. I like uh, characters that are straight up and not too complicated. It's easy to recommend. We're going to build him as an attacker because even his no healing thing still depends on his Cosmo attack. Under red, Rosary would be the best option with the biggest boost but this is a Cosmo that's used a lot. It's shared by a lot of units so if you don't have any good Rosaries, if you already used up all your best sets and you have a Cosmo Stone set sitting around, he's perfectly fine with it. Just like Omri has it equipped here, you're going to see the damage. It's really good anyway. Under Lunar, you're really just going to look for the set with the best substance. Knowing is not bad because his base HP is decently high so he benefits from the boost. It also gives him resistance to make sure that he can play his songs and then he can deal damage. But really none of the other options other than probably Seiya and Jade Light which don't fit him at all. Any of the other options if you have a good set with the substats that you're looking for which we're gonna mention in a little bit then go with that. Under Star it's easy as well. Hummingbird is the best Cosmo for him. Cosmo attack, Cosmo damage but speed. Very important that he moves early in the round. He can play his song and then when the enemy units start moving they take damage. If he's slow and he moves at the end of the round and that's a bunch of enemy movements that you're losing damage on and that's why nether although it might increase his damage a little bit i would still go with hummingbird for the speed in legendary the option is fortunately very clear as well two horn snake is the best by far because his damage happens after the enemy movement it's kind of like the worm so this effect of 40 percent extra damage when the enemy's already moved will always apply what it doesn't apply to is the third skill if we do attack manually with that one and we're not attacking a really really fast unit that already moved in that round then we won't get this buff as for subsets we're going to look for as much cosmo attack as possible not only to increase his damage but also his no healing effect speed goes great make sure he moves at the beginning of the round and then give him a little bit of survivability hp defense if you can find resistance that's really good especially if you're not going with knowing then try to find some resistance substats in the other cosmo Onto his teams then, and because he's not a unit that spends a lot of energy, both of his active skills only cost 2 energy, he kind of fits in anywhere. He pairs particularly well with Luna because he can be double turned and the effect of his serenade stacks, so you'll be doing 2 damage for every enemy movement instead of 1. He also pairs well with a unit that basically nobody uses, but I don't know, maybe we start seeing more of him. He is a really strong control unit, it just, it takes time, he requires a lot of energy, so we'll see if this actually comes into play or not, but his passive benefits from units falling asleep, so maybe it's an interesting combination, time to play with Sor 
Lorenzo. Other than that, pretty much with anyone, except one guy, Pablo. Evil Saga. Because Orphe does spend energy, even if he doesn't deal damage with his second skill, doesn't deal direct damage, he still spends energy. Especially if you're gonna double turn him, he's gonna use four. That means this guy is going to murder him, and that's gonna be on your team and on the enemy team as well. This is his biggest weakness. If you're gonna use him in Galactic Duel, make sure you ban this guy. And with that, we're gonna talk about his other weaknesses. Uh, one of them would be that the Lyra Seals can be cleansed, Arayashiki Shaka can do it automatically and get an attack buff for himself in the process, Saori can also cleanse it manually, there's not a lot of units that cleanse but it can still be cleansed so it's still a sort of weakness. The second big one is going to be the cost of tomes, like we saw if we want a really really strong Orphe, we're gonna need somewhere around 20-23 tomes, that is very costly especially because Divine Shiryu is about to come out. We all want that unit and we know that he needs 20 something tomes too, so it's gonna be really really hard for the majority of us to build them both properly. Another sort of weakness is that if we do want to use his big nuke on a single target, it takes a long while to accumulate those seals, so it's something that we will only really effectively use every two or three rounds. Control, as we mentioned, is also a big issue, not only because it doesn't let us use the skills manually, but the automatic attacks won't even happen either if he's controlled. And that brings us pretty close to the demonstration. Uh, his uses in the game are going to be mostly PvP. He can also be useful in some long PvE fights, for example, uh, the Athena Trial. He can deal damage. He only uses two energy, and then he can deal damage to all of the enemy units when they move. But mostly, really, you're gonna see him in PvP. A lot of times with a, some sort of double turn with energy generation to make sure that he can start using his stuff first and if you are going to use him or you're going to run into a team that uses him then Isaga will be a perma ban. And now it's time. Let's go do a demonstration in arena. I expect Omri to be very high ranked. I expect a lot of defenses to be using Evil Saga. So let's see if we can find somebody that we can play with. The demonstration yesterday was a bit of a disaster. It was really close. We almost lost and we didn't get to see too much of Orphe. I'm going to try to do a better job today. Uh, bring some energy generation and bring Luna to double turn as well. Alright, so as expected, Omri is very high ranked. I already tried one battle doing a stupid strategy. It did not work out, so I'm gonna try again. I found, again, I found one guy that's not using Evil Saga, because if you go against Evil Saga, you're gonna die. Guaranteed, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna fight uh, Kuridin from FDP. He's in the wrong uh, series. He should be playing the Dragon Ball game, but we're gonna fight him anyway, and... I'm gonna change up the strategy because what I tried in the last battle did not work. I tried to go Orphe as the single damage dealer. Alright, so here's the team we're gonna try and I'm expecting complete failure. We're gonna go with Luna to try to double turn Orphe, but we're not gonna generate energy with Athena in round one. Then Hashun to double turn Milo and hopefully kill something and let me do Ares. Hey, begin! Oh my god, did it save? I don't know if it's safe. <laughs> I guess we're about- yes, it's safe, it's safe. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, so. Uh, Junivine, obviously. There's, there's almost no way to play without Junivine right now. It's just incredibly hard. Alright, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna use Luna on this first turn simply. Well, there's not enough energy. But if I don't generate energy... Oh, I was gonna wait until the second turn to generate energy, but if I do... Then I am going to waste a whole round where Orphe doesn't do crap. So it may be a while before Orphe... And here's the thing. It, this, the fights are being decided so quickly right now that it's damn near impossible to, you know, sit here long enough for things to build up and, and have a chance to do something in round 3 or 4. This Milo, it's too much damage. It's too much damage. We generate a little bit of energy, uh, although we don't really need that much right now. I'm gonna play this thing, try to start dealing some damage when the enemy moves. Uh, we're gonna give a double turn to Milo. And in the previous fight, what I tried to do is bring Orphe as the single damage threat. And that obviously did not work out because uh, it takes a while. Even if he's playing his best songs, you know, his best hits, it still plays, it, it still takes a while. So I'm gonna go with this. There's no point in triggering, what do you call it? There's no point in triggering healing from the enemy team because we didn't bring a Mew. So I'm actually gonna try to get rid of Juna. I'm gonna try to get rid of Juna first. I used Ares on Mew. And on the next turn, we'll be able to apply another Serenade. So every time the enemy moves, they'll be hit twice. All right. Here comes the Milo, the enemy Milo. My my poor Orphe is already getting really low and we have no heals. And this Orphe is pretty well built, pretty well equipped. And he's already almost dead. Oh my god, it's so hard. How do we even... How do we even... Oh my goodness gracious. I can't give double turn here again because I don't have enough energy. Now, but notice all the enemy line already has seals applied because it happens automatically after they move. Alright, so here we healed a little bit, thanks to, uh, thanks to what's-his-face, we don't need energy again, thanks to, uh, Hashun's automatic heal. Alright, Orphe is still alive, but this is getting dangerously low, we have two more energy, and with this, hopefully with the automatic damage, with the automatic damage when the enemies move, this chicken might, 
But the thing is, are we even gonna survive the enemy Milo's turn? Can we kill it? Eh! It has a damn healing. If we don't kill it here, we're kinda screwed. But, if we kill Juni, then when this Milo moves, he's gonna take massive damage and it will not be distributed. Alright? So, we have to survive one hit. It died. It died and Hashun died too. Did you see that? Oh my god, that's a lot of damage, but that's three hit. No, no, no. Double turn. Juni. Guys, we're so close. What is she doing? Who is she gonna kill? Or if he can deal damage, obviously, our Milo is dead, so our only hope here, there is no hope. Because with this AoE, or he dies. Oh, the heal from Hashun happens. The heal from Hashun happens after the damage. So the damage goes first, and then the Hashun heal takes place. But we can actually we can kill this thing here. Is there still a chance? If Omri's Athena stays, no, Omri's Athena is gonna kill my Athena, right? Omri's Athena is going to kill my Athena, and then we're dead. Oh no, we lost. We lost! No! No, she does stay, because she has skill-ups. Wait! The enemy Athena derped! The enemy Athena derped! We actually win! We didn't get to see the anti-heal because it was such an eclectic, it was such an exciting battle that I didn't even think to test the anti-healing from Orphe. But you can see how the damage, uh, depending on how many stacks of, the, of that serenade you have, the damage starts stacking on the enemy units. This was so close! It's not even funny, but it's a GG. Athena ends up winning it, uh, and Orphe played a good part. He did deal quite a bit of damage. I didn't activate the thing, guys. I didn't activate the thing. Wait, did I just throw the fight? Did I just throw the fight? Please die. Oh my god, it doesn't die! Please die! Oh my god, it doesn't <laughs> Not like this, bro. Not like this. I forgot to activate the thing. But we still have one more chance. We still please kill that stupid bird. Oh my god, thank god. And that's gonna be it for today, guys. That was an amazing demonstration. Uh, as usual, I almost threw the fight. I don't know how I can play this game so much and still be so bad at it. In short, Orphe is a character with a very high potential. He can do a lot of damage, even though that wasn't the best demonstration in the world. But he needs two things. He needs the skill-ups, 20-something tones, and then he needs the setup. He needs a bunch of things to happen and a lot of other units to help him in order for him to do that big damage or to be able to apply all the stuff he needs to apply. Fun unit, can be really strong, can be really useful, maybe with a slight rework a rebirth cloth in the future he can be that op character that he should be because he's really cool that's it for me a quick reminder this is another giveaway video just like all of this week all you have to do to participate is leave a comment in this video we will be picking the winners live on streams this whole week and they will all be announced together in one giant video next monday best of luck to everybody participating if you haven't done it already please remember to hit like subscribe to the channel ring the bell and i'll see you guys again next time bye